Good morning once again, my dear brothers and sisters. Good morning. I would like to introduce myself first to you, since uh, our commentator did not introduce me because he doesn't know me. I am Father Alfredo Africa Jr., member of the Mission Society of the Philippines. The only country or the only continent that we did not have our Filipino missionaries is Africa because I'm already carrying that in my name wherever I go. That's my, my, my surname. Today, every last Sunday of July, the Filipino Mission Sunday is being celebrated by the whole Philippine Catholic Church. And this is to honor and to pray for our Filipino missionaries, especially the members of the Mission Society of the Philippines, or the MSP. There was a beautiful introduction by our commentator about the sacrifices, the life that is being offered by all the missionaries. And yesterday, exactly one year yesterday, we have one missionary who for the first time in the history of the MSP, died in the mission and I would like to honor him today as we celebrate the Filipino Mission Sunday. His name is Father Robert Sablon from Iloilo, a very young, energetic and very hopeful, full of enthusiasm and yet he died suddenly. He had that, this uh, asthma, and then he suffered from that. And unfortunately, he did not survive. He was appointed the national uh, coordinator, youth coordinator for the whole of Papua New Guinea and uh, uh, Solomon Islands. They are grouped. These two countries are grouped for the what we call here the CBCP. They're the CBCP PNG. Solomon Islands, the Catholic Bishops Conference of Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands. And, uh, and uh, they, he was appointed as the youth coordinator for these two countries. A very promising young missionary at the age of 43. Yes, he has found the treasure. And for him, the treasure is his faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. The history of the MSP, you know, can be traced back during the, the first landing of the conquerors, the colonizers, together with them are the missionaries. That was in the year 1521. And yet, after that, there was a interruption because as we know, uh, they were they they encountered an opposition by the natives during that time, and so they they took off. They went back to their countries, and they came back only in 1565, and that was the start of the proper Christianization or catechism in our land, and from then on. You know, the Christianity spread like wildfire among the native Filipinos. And in 1965, when the, when the Philippines, when our country was celebrating the 400 years of Christianization, that was the birth of the Mission Society of the Philippines. Why? Because we are grateful to God for the gift of Christianity. And so the Filipino people uh, headed by the CBCP, the Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines, decided to establish a missionary congregation as a response to the missionary challenge of the church. And we are grateful to God for that gift, that treasure that we have received from God through the foreign missionaries who came into our land, from whom we receive the gift of faith. 
And that is what we are wealthy of now. What we are, that is our, the treasure of us. That cannot be taken away from us wherever we go. You know, when, when Filipinos go abroad for uh, like a uh, tourist for uh, just for furlough and holiday, when Sunday comes, the first thing that they will look for is the Catholic Church because they wanted to worship God, to, to join the community, to worship God with the believers. So from then on, the, the, the Philippines became from mission receiving church, we become and we became mission sending church. We are now sending our missionaries as a sign of gratitude to God. So each MSP is a sign of gratitude of the Filipino people to God for the gift of Christianity. And what is interesting is that, you know, the great missionaries who came into our land, the Europeans, the Americans, the Irish, but now, MSP is sending missionaries to these countries in Europe, in Belgium, and in the Netherlands, we are working there. And of course, we are kind of intimidated by them. But I, I, I told our priest there, said no. When you go there, when you go there, we will tell them that we are your products. We are the fruits of your labor more than 400 years ago. And we are here to return the favor. And we are grateful to you, and that's why we are here. We want to share this gift that we have received, our the, the, the uh, pearl of great price that we have found in our life. And that, again, will not be taken away from us, wherever we go. I was a missionary to Papua New Guinea. I will uh, show you some uh, video clips or uh, later. And the challenge in the mission is not just physical, it's also mental, spiritual, psycho-emotional. Because when you are in the mission, like myself, I was placed in, in the bush of Papua New Guinea isolated place. The only transport that can reach our parish, Bush Parish, is a small plane. And in, in order to have the small plane go to our uh, mission, an airstrip should be built. It's just about 500 meters long because you have to find a flat ground in order to build an airstrip. So it's that isolated and when we visit the villages we have to walk for hours and hours eight hours nine hours ten hours crossing the the valleys the rivers and climbing up mountains and hills it was very challenging that at one point in, on, in my life i was supposed to quit i was being attacked by by malaria and during that time i was uh, alone in my house I was sweating profusely because of that's one of the effects of, of malaria. And I was chilling, shivering alone. And I asked God, hey Lord, is this what it means to be celibate? To be just for you. To live a life of single, single life. With no one to take care of me, no one to, to give me at least the medicine that I need. And I said, I... I, that was the greatest temptation in my life as a young priest. Because at the age of 28, I was already in a mission. I was already a priest during that time. And as young as I was during that time, when I was attacked by malaria, I told myself, and I, I questioned God, why, do you, why did you bring me here? Alone. And no one to, to help me. 
And then during the time when I was questioning God about my vocation, the wisdom of becoming a priest, there was a knock at my door. Then I got up, and when I opened it, lo and behold, the head nurse of the clinic. She's a, a native of Papua New Guinea, a lady, and I said, Wow, Lord, this is the answer to my, to my prayer. <laughs> you gave me a woman <laughs> to be with me. But she had another purpose. And she told me, Father, could you please come to the clinic? Because there is a baby who is trying to die. That's, uh, that's how they formulate their English. There is a baby who is dying. Please come to the clinic and baptize the baby before ever if, she, if the baby dies. So I dress up. Even if I was shivering, I was chilling, I dress up and go just that the clinic was just across the father's house and uh, the, the baby was uh, a male. So I gave the baby, the child, the name Peter. The rock foundation of the church. I said that Peter, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. And then after that, the nurse gave me the medicine. I went back and I was able to sleep. The following morning, early in the morning, the nurse was knocking at the door again. And then she told me, Father, I'm sorry to tell you, the baby just passed away. And so I told myself, yes, Lord, this is the reason why you have brought me here. That before this baby died, he would have a name. A name because our name is written in heaven. When we have a name and we are baptized, the Lord Jesus Christ is telling us, you are mine. You are mine. So, value your your name because your baptismal name that is a name even to you during baptism value that name brothers and sisters missionary life is really challenging it was the second year of my priesthood but because of the grace of god i could not take any credit on it because through the grace of god he has, in, he, he has helped me endure the 33 years of priesthood. And I've been, from then on, I've been assigned to different missions. From Bush Mission, I was assigned to First World Mission in the United States, the Sacramento Diocese. And from, uh, from First World Mission, I was assigned to Migrant Mission in South Korea. So I have valid missionary experiences but brothers and sisters we, we don't have to all of us to go to the mission in order to be part of actively to be part actively of the mission of Christ first through our prayers and sacrifices offered for the missionaries we can be a missionary remember St. Teresa of the Child Jesus you, you probably have a uh, most of you have the devotion to Saint Teresa of the Child Jesus. She is a contemplative nun, a Carmelite nun. But because of her ardent prayers and sacrifices offered for the missionaries, she was proclaimed by the church as the patroness of mission. She never went to the mission. So you can also be like that through your prayers and sacrifices. And second, through vocation. By encouraging young people and I invite young people here to join us to to be a missionary priest we have a mission in in different parts of the world in Papua New Guinea in Cook Islands Australia New Zealand in South Korea in Japan Thailand Taiwan in the Middle East in Oman in uh, United Arab Emirates in in uh, Europe in uh, Belgium and Netherlands in North America, in uh, USA, and in Canada. 